Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into something really cool, setting up virtual machines in Unraid. Whether you're new to Unraid or just looking to level up your tech game, I've got you covered. We're gonna break it down step by step so you can get up and running in no time. Let's make virtual magic happen. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to log back into our uh, test server that we set up in our last video. And uh, we're gonna head over to the shares section and uh, we're gonna need to make the ISOs folder um, uh, exportable. It's gonna click yes on that and I'm just gonna keep it public to keep things simple. And then the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to download uh, what's called the vert IO drivers, essentially virtual interface drivers that the virtual machine requires in order to utilize the hardware of your server. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to download the uh, operating system we're going to put on. So I'm, I'm just going to use Ubuntu as, a, as a, uh, a demo here. So we'll go ahead and download that. It's 5.8 gigabytes. And we're going to use it for education. And ah, I'm not going to subscribe to that. Okay, next thing we're gonna need to do is download the Vert IO drivers. So uh, a fresh install of Unraid typically will not have those drivers and uh, they're gonna live in the ISOs folder on your server. So we're just gonna go ahead and search for Vert IO Unraid drivers. And then it's gonna take us to the Unraid forum. And then we'll scroll down and we can see that a community developer has uh, posted a link here. And then we'll just follow the, uh, the links. And then we're brought to uh, this page here. And uh, then it's gonna tell us that we need to head over to GitHub to download the drivers. So we'll head over there. And then we're gonna pick uh, which one we need for Unraid, which is the stable vert IO win ISO. So we'll go ahead and download that, which I have uh, already gone ahead and done here. And uh, we see that uh, this is still downloading Ubuntu. But in the meantime, we can go ahead and get this uh, working, or get the uh, Vertio drivers copied over. So just uh, share my other screen here. Okay, so just going to open up our share. Our BC Adventures. And there's our ISOs. So we got that open now. Close that out. And then I'm just going to drag and drop the vert IO drivers there. All right, so now that's copied. And we'll just uh, pause here and wait for, wait for Ubuntu here to uh, finish Finish its download. It looks like it's going to be about six minutes, six or seven minutes. So we're just going to go ahead and wait for this to finish up. And as soon as that's done, we'll jump back in. All right. So now that that is done, we're going to go ahead and get that copied over to the share drive. So this is one of the benefits of having that cache drive enabled. It's, uh, it is uh, getting true gigabit per second speeds here. So we're gonna come back to that as soon as that finishes. Okay, so now that that is basically finished up, now we get to dive into the uh, fun part of it and actually deploying this virtual machine. And we're going to click on Add Virtual Machine. And then we're going to click on our operating system. It is important that we do select the architecture that we need. So Ubuntu. 
And then we need to sign it CPUs. Uh, I'm just gonna go full out and give it uh, all 16 cores here. And uh, got quite a bit of RAM, so I'm gonna, I'll give it uh, 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, so this is where we select our uh, operating system installation media. So we'll just click that and then we see Ubuntu is populated here in our dropdown. So we'll click that. And then what we need to do is set the disk size. Um, I'm just going to do it at 64 gigabytes to be on the safe side. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, our graphics card, uh, we can either use the, the default system one, which will make it unavailable to Unraid, or we can just simply do a virtual uh, no screen, um, or whatever that's called. And then we can optionally set a password to log into the VNC. Uh, we're not gonna do that though. And then you can set a sound card, which the server does not have one. And then it is a network bridge, so we're just gonna go ahead and let it give it a bridge. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm not gonna set it to start the VM right after. Okay, so now we see that we have one virtual disk that's 64 gigabytes. It's got 16.8 gigs of RAM and 16 CPUs or 16 cores. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start the console, or start with console. And if you have a pop-up blocker, you need to make sure that that's allowed to go. And then you're gonna be presented with a screen, which I'll have to get into my other window here. And it's just as if you were using a system that had a keyboard and mouse and, you know, the, the all the components right in front of you. So. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, oh, we're going to uh, click into that and we're going to try or install Ubuntu. So if you want to monitor what's happening as well, if you uh, bring back your uh, Unraid system here and you head over to Dashboard. You can actually see the overall load and then each core load, as well as your RAM down here. You can also see your flash utilization, uh, your log file utilization, as well as Docker. And then also a breakdown of all your uh, network interfaces if you have more than one. So I'm just going to head back over to our virtual machine. And we're going to select English. And we'll just go through the normal setup process as if we were installing an operating system right in front of us uh, on an actual machine. And this is totally optional to you. Feel free to select what you need. But for uh, this demo, we're just going to do a bare bones. and then go through the basic setups. Not gonna let me do my simple password. And then just to keep it extra, you know, extra simple, I'm actually just gonna remove that login requirement. All right, so that's, uh, that's installing now. And if we head back over to our dashboard and we go over to main and we click this little uh, list icon uh, for the read write display, we can actually see what's happening live uh, when it's happening. So looks like right now it's just preparing the files and, and there's no read write action. Um, but once this actually begins uh, installing, uh, we'll be able to see the read and write speeds that the system is utilizing. Uh, so let's close that. Oh, we see now it's installing the system. Let's open up the terminal so we can actually see what's happening. Anything happening on our dashboard? Yeah, we can see it's, uh, it's going there. Well, it was. 
Oh, there we go. 2.2 megabytes a second. A whopping speed we're getting. Oh, there. Oh, kilobytes. Guess I'm not really making a good case for this cache drive, eh? But we do see that uh, that there is some stuff going on here, albeit slow. Um, this is an older system. It's not, you know, anything crazy. Uh, actually, why don't we go ahead and have a look at the specs for this system. So I'm running uh, dual CPUs and uh, it's an Intel Xeon uh, X 5667 running at 3.07 gigahertz uh, boosted. Uh, I've got uh, 47 or 48 gigs of RAM with uh, it's like one gig or 0.9 going to the to the video card. And uh, I am running a uh, 10 gig fiber ethernet card on this system, um, but I, I don't have the, um, the, uh, ah, the SFP module plugged into uh, my 10 gig switch at the moment. Um, uh, so it's currently just running on uh, one gig uh, network. But, uh, you know, we can go ahead and change this icon to make it actually represent. Give it that, and uh, let's head back over to our system, see where it's at. All right, so it's still installing the system. But we're uh, just going to go ahead and wait for that to finish up. Yeah, we see there it's actually uh, making some good speeds, 191 megabytes a second. That's uh, not anything a mechanical hard drive would be able to reach. All right, so we're going to wait for this to finish up and then we will jump back in as soon as this is done. Okay, so that is now finished and it needs to do a restart. So we'll go ahead and just click restart now. And once it's installed, it is actually pretty quick to boot. Ah, okay. So we need to actually stop the virtual machine and looks like pull out the, or unmount the installation media. So we'll go over to VMs here. We're going to force stop and then we're going to edit and we're going to just remove the installation path and click update. After that, we're going to start with the uh, VNC console again. All right, so all in all, that took roughly uh, 10 minutes from starting the virtual machine creation process from the Unraid dashboard to getting booted uh, directly into Ubuntu. So we'll just go ahead and, uh, yeah, we're gonna skip that. No, I don't want to share any data. And uh, yeah, we'll open the App Center and see what that looks like. So they have an App Store similar to the uh, App Store from Apple or the Google Play Store. And uh, you can download uh, a number of, um, of applications from here. And uh, un I'm sorry, not Unraid. Uh, Linux has done an amazing job at uh, making themselves open to uh, the gaming market. They've, they've really done a lot of work to uh, support graphics cards and uh, Steam is, has their, their, um, uh, their applications and uh, uh, quite an extensive uh, library of games that you can play on Linux. And then Windows has that uh, um, operating system that you can kind of run in the background of Linux. I'm not a Linux person, so I, I'm not good at that type of stuff, but uh, Linus Tech Tips has some, some great videos out uh, showing how to get that Windows uh, shadow operating system to run on Linux so that you can play some of your Windows games over on your Linux system. So. Uh, I don't know where the process is on that and, or how it works even. Uh, I, I've just, you know, seen videos about it. But um, it is something that we could touch on in the future. I'm personally not a gamer on a PC or Mac. Um, I, I like my trusty PlayStation 3 and uh, 
I'll, I'll jump onto the PS5 and fail with the kids, you know, every so often. But that's pretty much it for setting up a virtual machine in Unrate. Um, depending on, you know, what people want, I can touch on a Windows system as a, it, it's a little bit more hands-on, uh, especially during the installation process. But uh, Unraid runs on Linux, so it has a lot of the drivers built in that it already needs, so there wasn't much intervention uh, required in order to get this set up on on the Linux side of things, but uh, you know it's a future video that we can look at doing. But other than that, you know it's uh, it's it's dead simple to get going. Uh, I understand that there can be some anxiety around setting it up and and uh, you know wanting to do it correctly. But uh, I hope these simple steps uh, you know helped you along and um, encourage you to try something new, uh, you know, don't be scared to take some risks, you know, that's, that's, I'm taking a risk by doing these videos, and while I stated in my last video how uncomfortable I am on camera, I am trying to push through that fear and anxiety of failure to uh, bring something to the public, to uh, the tech community, to aspiring uh, people who, who want to get into the fields, um, it's never too late to start. Um, I, I, I really encourage everyone who's been thinking about it or, you know, maybe putting it off out of fear, just, just jump in and do it. It's, it's, I'm enjoying myself and I'm learning a lot about myself throughout this and, and, uh, some of the fears that I've had, you know, in, in getting started with this, but, Again, uh, you know, all it takes is, is uh, just to try it out and, you know, maybe you'll fail the first time or two. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll surprise yourself. So uh, get out there, try something new, you know, really, really, in, you know, in, bask in it, enjoy it. You know, if you fail, well, you know, I like to say at work, um, you didn't, you didn't uh, mess up, you created a learning opportunity. So. You know, it's um, in healthcare we're we're always uh, creating new learn opportunities, especially on the administrative administrative side of things. So, uh, don't be scared. Give it a try. You'll you'll do great. All right. Until the next time. Thanks for watching, everyone. I've uh, very anxiously enjoyed doing this. So, <laughs> let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Uh, give a like. Give a subscribe. Uh, please leave a comment. Good, negative, bad. You know, I don't care. Leave a comment. I'm, I'm happy to read it. Thanks, everyone.